G'day everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls and you can see behind me just a glimpse and uh, just a very quick glimpse at the modification that I'm doing to our helm. It's coming together really nicely. I've basically been piecing it together piece by piece trying to get this thing totally functional. Now, this week I'm gonna deal with an issue that this boat has right down at the stern, right at the walkthrough transom. There's a step about this high and I'm gonna show you how I'm dealing with that and uh, basically go from right through to a dry fit of the actual modification. So, a bit of gel coat spraying and uh, and yeah, some interesting stuff in there about how I modified those molds to, uh, to make this modification essential. Now, last week I alerted you to the fact that we were all flooding on the east coast of New South Wales. Just so you know, we escaped unscathed. There was a bit of cleanup required, but we had water to about two feet from our floorboards. Uh, people across the road, although you know some of them were inundated, we had people down the road. The road was closed right at our doorstep, and uh, their houses were inundated in the first floor. So very, very sad stuff. Up on the north coast of New South Wales, there's people that have just lost everything. So you know, heart goes out to them and uh, you know, if you're watching from up in Lismore area, one guy called the Build Rat, he's up in uh, in Lismore area, mate, I hope you're okay. It's uh, been an absolute shocker. Now, just one thing, last week, uh, Bruce Wilson from Sailing Yacht and Mistress. Now, if you're not watching Bruce building his steel boat and just the simple craftsmanship that this guy has put into this boat, it is a beautiful craft. His woodworking skills are just out of control. Well, he and I decided to sit down a month ago or so and uh, and have a good chat. It was just like two brothers going out for a beer together. We sat down over a Zoom meeting and uh, and he's put it up on his channel last week. And it's quite an interesting 35 minutes or so of us chatting and chewing the card about all things boat building, some things about life, and just simply how much I swear. It's, uh, it's very, very funny. There's a couple of funny comments in there. And I think next week he's putting up part two of that conversation. It was so nice to have a chat with a guy that is in the same predicament. Sharing the predicament with somebody else is just so vital to getting through this. Janet and I have been working so hard inside this boat all week tabbing the internal seams and getting them all looking absolutely beautiful. So the whole boat's down, it's joined, it's seamed and now I'm working on all the internal robes, doorways, bulkheads and the like getting it all tabbed after our massive gluing session a couple of weeks ago. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, let's get into it. This whole build has been all about being prepared to modify and change to get a better outcome. And I'm about to head into another modification. Not only have I had to modify the uh, sides of the deck, the anchor hatch, and a number of other modifications, including the helm station. I'll be doing some massive modifications there. Right at the very back, or the stern of the deck, is a large step, and that step is around about two and a half feet high. And the issue with that being, if you wanna go down the companionway, down the side decks of this boat, you have to step up almost two and a half feet uh, on your knees and then up onto your feet. Now, that's just not going to cut it. So the original builder of the boat back in uh, the early 2000s decided that they would cut in some stairs and fortunately took a splash molding off that section. It means I have to cut into the back, very back quarter of each of the stern uh, sections of the boat. But the nice thing is I have an actual mold with which to make that step. I don't have to physically carve it in and then uh, and then kerf the foam. I'm gonna make the parts here, up in the factory here, and then simply slot them in and then tab in from behind, do the decorative finish on the front. So not a real big deal, but the issue is that these molds have seen better days. They've been sat out the back there, and in fact, they're around 20 years old now, so they've had some pretty serious weather on them. I've just been, uh, for the last hour or so, polishing them up with 1200 grit and as you can see they've seen better days but this is a step um, as you can see there that will actually be a cutting step on the uh, on the outside of the boat and essentially <clears throat> now that I have this form I can just plasticine it up where necessary make the form put it in place and then do some decorative work later on and the cosmetic 
finish is the most important part. Getting the structure is critical, and then the cosmetic stuff can come a lot later once I put it in, but it will make the boat a lot more usable. It'll bring it into the next century, so to speak, where good access is everything. So for now, the key is to get these polished up and some plasticine where needed to make sure that when I pull it off, there's not gonna be too much extra work to be done, but it's gonna be a very simple layout. It's, uh, it's just basically four layers of glass, some foam, another two layers of glass, and that'll be done, and then they can be cut in to the actual deck itself. Right, so this is in quite um, sad state, um, these rebates in here. So short of doing a complete repair on it, and then the next guy who decides to use these moulds, you know, whether he decides to use them or not, it's up to him, he can repair them. But um, for me, I'm just going to plasticine them up and just pull a product off and then repair it retrospectively. It's better than spending a lot of time trying to retro build a mold for something that's only going to be used once and uh, sometimes you've got to make that call because molds take a lot longer than a quick retro uh, fix and, and quite simply plasticine will do it it won't stick to the gel coat I know that I can get the product off tidy it up and it'll be good enough um, if I was building this in a production sense I'd certainly put this mold into the mold and pull it off in one hit but it wasn't done but for now I'm just doing a little bit of tidy up with the with a uh, tongue depressor to get the radius I, I need here to make sure that I get good release and then I'll come back and give it a good clean with some methylated spirits and, and it's going to be a pretty simple layup it'll take me probably two or three hours to make both of these parts and uh, and at least get the shape right and then I'll be able to discard the mold put it into the pile for whoever buys the mold office. As I mentioned, it's not pretty. Simple plasticine infill just to create form where I would otherwise have a void or a crack or a, a deformity in the mold. But that's pretty much done. I just need to give it a bit of a wipe over and a little bit of a tidy up. But that has certainly given me enough to derive these two parts. I'll whack them out in the morning. I'll come in in the morning, give it a gel coat. And uh, you know, by lunchtime, I'll be laminating and get three or four layers on it make it substantial enough, pull it off the mould, and then I'll just finish it later on. I'll be able to work out how to integrate that into the back deck of the catamaran and really improve the function of that back deck. I mean, Janet's not tall enough to even crawl up onto this thing as it stands, so having an extra step um, is going to certainly save my knees and, uh, and anyone else that comes along. And I'm pretty tall and I can pretty much get up on anything, but uh, these things are gonna make a monster difference to the back end of the boat. Now, to gel coat these two moulds, I've actually chosen to use my HVLP gun, my high volume, low pressure gun. I run it at around about 45 to 50 PSI. Uh, very important to use a nozzle thickness of around about two to two and a half millimetres when spraying gel coat. Uh, a simple spray uh, gun for spraying paints won't suffice. You simply won't get the material out. Now, I've also done a separate video on the composite shop channel and i'll put a link here uh, and a card above here that you can actually go over to now this video highlights how to maintain and how to clean a gun simply straight after a gel coat session such as what i'm doing here without tearing the gun down it's an interesting it's a short video but it's certainly well worth watching and uh and i, I suggest you go over there and link to the uh the composite shop channel and subscribe to that as well if you're not already subscribed there's a lot more detail and technical information there on that channel And about an hour later, we've got the ability to be able to touch it. That's now ready to laminate. So I can uh, just check for any defects and then get straight into the laminating.
So this one's now done. That's actually um, four layers. That's two layers of 300, my tie layer, 600 double buys, and another layer of 300. I'm going to leave that for the day, come back tomorrow, and then I'm going to basically add foam core under the step, and I'm going to add core mat around the riser. It is a bit of a difficult shape, so I'm better off to put something like a core mat, like a 3M or 3XM core mat there, which will give me a two millimetre thickness and a lot of strength and bulk, but certainly not uh, not foam core around the back there. I, I, you got to remember that I'm actually going to tie this into the deck with multiple layers of tabbing. So the strength that's in the product itself is going to be even further beefed up by all of those additional tabs around the perimeter of the stair module and, uh, and essentially going to tie that into the deck, giving it a lot more strength it would otherwise have straight off a mold like this but i'll crack this off the mold tomorrow and then i'll finish it and then basically start to work on integrating it into the deck so i've worked my way around the product here with the wedges and in essence it was actually easier to demold the deck than it has been this but it feels a bit that way when i'm here and i'm so hot in here today it is almost unbearable how hot it is it's probably 35 degrees outside but uh, yeah, so I've basically worked my way around it. Um, I'm just going to show you how I've got some release. You can see here, I've got a little bit of release around the sides. Now, my fear is that this area here, there's quite a lot of plasticine, so that's probably what's holding it in place. I've actually put an air hole in the back here so that I can get some air into it. I've got air blowing through there now. So that's all looking pretty good. Now, all I need to do now is, uh, is just wiggle it off. Now, the one thing, I do not expect this to be pretty. Um, these are very, very temporary moulds and, uh, and basically I put about 10 minutes of preparation in it before I sprayed them up, so I expect it to be pretty ugly, but let's have a look. Yeah, it's ugly, but it's off the mould and that's all that matters. All I needed was this defined shape and, uh, and Janet will be up later this week, I'm going to get her to polish this up. It's, uh, it's certainly going to do the job for what I need. Oh, there's some pretty horrible stuff going on here, but it's all male, and uh, and that makes a massive difference. I've always said if you're not prepared to modify something, don't bother doing it at all. I'm uh, all about modifying this and trying to get it right from the start. It is creating a lot of extra work, but those things are just critical for the function of this boat. I've got our steer. Uh, working out how it's going to fit, it's actually not that easy. It's going to be a bit of a guessing game and then a lot of excess trimming, I think. So I've got to undersize. I've done a bit of a rough fitment there and it has to be cut out and then refitted. So I've got to work out how to do it at the top. I'm doing it with a combination of curve, template making and, uh, and just spirit level. Well, this could possibly be the scariest cut of all. Um, I'm pretty much going on a guess here, but I'm going to have to cut this inside one. After many, many cuts and a bit of fine tuning, I got the stair to fit to within a reasonable amount of, uh, of preciseness. But then what I needed to do then was work out a way that I could actually back it. So what I did is I cut some composite angle and, uh, and just simply uh, clamped it in place, as you can see here, screwed it in place with some self-tapping screws and that gave me some backing with which to sit it in. I'll then be able to glue it to that with epoxy and then I'll be able to tab over the top of it once it's in place. I'm simply after a good fit here on both sides and uh, by doing this I was able to stop the thing from falling in but it actually has a very very good result. It wasn't quite as accurate as I would have liked but it certainly uh, will do the job and then uh, ultimately there'll be a lot of filling and fairing. All right, so I've roughed this one in and uh, yeah, it's a bit ordinary. 
a little bit overzealous, but it's not quite down. So I think that'll come down to about five millimeters, which is what I'm after. So this has still got to go down another five millimeters or a centimeter or so. So I'm working now on the other side. I've just gone and polished this part up, giving it a bit of a clean up out of the mold. And I've got it sitting here. And we're just trying to, I'm just trying to work out pretty much where to do a rough cut for my first cut. You certainly don't want to do your second cut <laughs> uh, too overzealously or you'll end up destroying the whole thing. But I've got to basically do it in stages because it's very hard to determine the size and the shape of this thing. Oh, you've got to be happy with that. That's going to look fantastic. I've put some backing in there. I'm going to go and epoxy it in place. Got the other sides done as well. Let's get and have a look over here. See that? That's now ready to go. I'm going to go epoxy those backing plates in, and then tomorrow I can come in and epoxy the actual stairway in place as well, and that'll uh, finish that up. Now, the other thing I've been doing is this hull extensions here. I've actually marked the actual extension and this is in exactly the right place and this adds 80 centimeters to the rear of the boat here and essentially gives me one step about four and a half feet long this whole area from here to there is one step so a huge uh, rear swim platform and the nice thing about it is you can pull your tender up to here and step straight on you don't have to step over I'm intending to probably have um, recessed steps here and have this open rather than having the curve that's there now but I'll work on that a bit later on all right so I've got some epoxy mixed up what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna glue these backing um, pieces of composite angle in place so that I've got good placement and then I'm gonna work on once this is glued in place I'm gonna work on actually getting the fit right it's not a good fit yet I still got to do a little bit of trimming but this stops it from falling in to the abyss it gives me the ability to be able to um, you know start to think about how I'm going to fare it in 